Fearless Girl swept the Cannes Lions. Films like Wonder Woman and The Black Panther are redefining what a Hollywood hero or heroine can be. Business leaders and celebrities are facing real consequences for their sexist and racist behavior. And of course you've noticed this. The number of commercials featuring female protagonists, gay couples, people with disabilities, even when their identity is not directly related to how they use the product or the brand. It may seem to be the natural reaction against the politics of Trump and Brexit, or an unsurprising outcome considering that millennials are the most diverse generation in history. But it's impossible to deny, we are in the midst of a cultural shift. And yet less than 6% of workers in the ad industry are black. One recent survey of nearly 9,000 advertising and PR executives in the United States revealed that only 93 of them are black women. Of all the commercials you see on television, one in 10 is actually directed by a woman. Those are sobering statistics for the marketing world, which seems to finally be coming to terms with a lack of representation from minority groups, both on screen and within their own companies. At this year's Can Lions Festival, Campaign investigated the concrete strategies both brands and agencies are employing to create a more inclusive advertising industry, one that more authentically reflects the population at large. There's a huge discussion here uh, this year on diversity, as it should be. You know, we're at a place where we're good, we're good, but we're not great. And how can we actually get to great? We have to put a stake in the ground a reality of where we are and then move the bloody dial as quickly as humanly possible. There are challenges for uh, people of color in the professional arena because for the most part we don't see them. This is not only a nice to have thing but it's a, a pressing uh, business matter. I think we have um, a responsibility to take every recruitment opportunity as a diversity opportunity. On every project, we also try to have a good mix of different backgrounds. We are already a mix of cultures. The more diverse the group is, uh, you know, the more diverse the ideas are. Enough talk already, get this upstream. In some cases, it seems that brands are the ones leading the way towards a more diverse future and putting pressure on their agencies to follow suit. Clients are writing memos publicly about what brands should be doing, what agencies should be doing to be more diverse. Many of our outside stakeholders, you know, NGOs, are actually um, 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 putting pressure on us and raising that, that issue. One of the conversations that I've been part of is how much the client should demand from the agency. I think we need to co-create targets so that in a year's time, and I've said we'll meet in a year's time and see if we've delivered those targets. So I think we need to agree them together. And I, I, I heard actually Airbnb clearly work really actively in this space yeah, and we're they were really yeah. inspiring. You know, when clients start to demand industry change, it happens because ultimately we're writing the checks. Airbnb CMO Jonathan Mildenhall made diversity a flashpoint for this year's festival after he took to social media to call out the Can Lions for a lack of brown faces among jurors. I use my social media following to create awareness on this issue. And so there have been a number of tweets that I've put out that challenge Canline about some of the decisions that they might make about the ethnicity um, mix of the speaker lineup, the presidents or the juries. So I've been coming to Can for 20 years. I was always just grateful to be here. It was just last year when I started to feel that actually I'm in a leadership position and I look very different to a lot of the leaders. There's not a lot of CMOs in the world that look like me. Uh, and I realized that I've got to stop feeling grateful and I've got to start feeling responsible. We all have a responsibility to make the um, on-ramps into our industry as broadly available as possible. And my leadership team and I sat down and said, well, let's stop talking and now let's start doing. And so we decided that we would turn this year's Can Lion into a recruiting event for us. And we're gonna share the results, the number of books, the number of interviews, and the number of jobs we offer in the hope that other global marketing organizations like Airbnb will see Can Lion as an ongoing opportunity to recruit underrepresented creators.
we are hosting people from all over the world and we are talking about what it means to be part of uh, a community that's underrepresented in the marketing industry. Out of the gate, someone just immediately, the first audience member was like, you know, speaking out can get, you can lose a client. So these are very real things for creatives of color, women, because I mean, I've been in this business for 20 years and I've often been afraid to express my voice and my opinions. It's not the first time Airbnb has taken on issues surrounding diversity. Earlier this year, research revealed that users on the Airbnb platform were less likely to rent to African Americans than they were to whites. It was, uh, it was really shocking for us because it's, it's antithetical to our very mission, um, one, um, one of wanting to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere. Since then, Airbnb has instituted a new anti-discrimination policy, requiring unconscious bias training for some of their hosts. Although Airbnb has built its brand around diversity, the company is currently facing its own deficit. The brand posts the gender and ethnic makeup of its employees online, and in 2016, about 43% of employees were female, a number that shrunk to 30% among the company's leadership. When it comes to multiple ethnicities, the representation is even worse. Jonathan Mildenhall and Airbnb are not alone. On the agency side, four African-American creative directors believe that they can affect change with the power of creativity. I think it is one of the tragedies of our nation, one of the shameful tragedies, that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is one of the most segregated hours, if not the most segregated hours, in Christian America. After encounters with police in Minnesota and Louisiana, two Baton Rouge police outraged over the shooting. Man shot by Minneapolis police. This is an example of an, a real unjust justice system. Saturday Morning is an initiative that began as a letter, and its creators hope will have the power to spur a cultural movement. On its website, the initiative invites creatives to submit ideas for a peace brief. This year's peace brief asks how society can reduce the amount of police violence in black communities. Um, we're asking people to submit ideas to that website. We take those ideas and we curate them. And those things are uh, put up as a showcase on the site. So we have a few pieces up now. Um, we're just kind of getting our engine going. Uh, and we're asking universities, we're asking individuals, and we're asking businesses to contribute. I believe that the creative community across all forms of creative, it's a, it's a gift. Helping people with that creative gift um, is becoming a thing, which is great. Uh, we hope it continues to grow, but it is without a doubt uh, our responsibility. And these conversations are hard, but nothing in this world, without, without struggle, there is absolutely no progress. And you have to have this struggle in order to find your way to the end of it all. This year was also the premiere of The Vows, a film festival recognizing the work of female directors. The Vows are a, a screening of the very best work made by women in the last 12 months, so short films, and advertising and branded content. There's a lot of stuff happening here. I think what we need to do uh, to, to kind of really change things is to give more visibility to the work. You know, this is a creative festival and it's great to have the conversations around the structures, but what really inspires people and will inspire change is seeing amazing work. Free the Bid addresses the triple bid system. So basically we go to agencies and brands and we ask them to take it upon themselves to monitor themselves, to own up to themselves that they're not aware of and they're not actively allowing enough women just to bid on commercials. We're not asking for women to be given the job because they're a woman, far from it. Initiatives around Free the Bid, which is something that has started in the States, are very powerful initiatives because they force an issue and they for force us to actually look a bit further in terms of that talent and it forces that talent to see that there's a there is an opportunity that the industry wants them to join it. It's one of those things that you don't have to think hard about and we reached out straight away and like we're in. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't be in. I mean, what on earth? Michael Farschnacht at FCB, one of our early, early first dayers, they added up their, their, um, all of their bids and in the last six months since taking the pledge, the triple bids that they put out it went from 30% had female directors, now 95% had female directors bidding on those commercials. FCB hosted a hashtag creativity and color gathering on their yacht. During the event, they announced a partnership with IDEA, 
a nonprofit that encourages business executives rather than human resources to control the conversation around diversity. Idea started as a dinner. We get together, call him, call you know the six of us that started it, and just really just vent. You know, just just talk to someone who looks like you who have complete empathy about what you're feeling in the industry. You know, I sat across from from. Uh, the producers of CAN back in April, what are they doing this year to address some of those issues? And, and they very pointedly told me that, well, we're not really doing anything. We don't really see that as, a, a, as an issue uh, on a global scale. And, and I, I just, I, I, was, I was flabbergasted to say, yeah. Next year, FCB has pledged to fully sponsor one young man or woman of color to attend CAN and is encouraging other agencies to do so. I want people who are people of color to want to work at FCB. And I want them to know that the CEO and the leadership team fully acknowledge that we are not where we should be, that this industry isn't doing enough, and we have to work harder at creating more opportunity for people of color in our industry. The first year that I was here, I was a bit in shock. I think part of it was me just trying to get my head wrapped around what CAM was all about in terms of celebrating the great work. Um, the reality is, I think as I've watched it, it has improved in terms of representation. Um, I, I feel this year there's been a concerted effort um, to ensure that we have people of color that are represented. I was one of two black people in this room um, attending the talk. and. A bunch of people came up to me afterwards um, to, you know, kind of further discuss this conversation and discuss, you know, what they're doing, you know, in their or own organization and what my background is. And it was really wonderful to see people um, be genuinely interested in these issues that we're talking about, like not, like you know, not just wanting to end the conversation once the panel ends, but wanting to continue it and further it. We got to stay on it. We have to stay restless. There's so much more to do. But I think in the aggregate and together, I think we will, we will reflect on this in a few years and say, look at the progress we've made. Well, I want it to not just be the cause for this year. Last year was VR, and this year is diversity. I don't want it to then just change on to the next new media thing or whatever. Diversity is an ongoing, evergreen thing that we should all be committed to, and it's not a one-year fad. It's forever, you know, and I, as, I, th I hope that's what comes out of this year's CAN. Uh, and so I no longer feel grateful coming to CAN, I, although I enjoy it very much, uh, but I feel a huge, huge res responsibility in each and every year I'm going to be campaigning for greater diversity and each and every year I'm going to be showing how the actions I've led have led to more success for the Airbnb brand. I think it's great that everyone's doing different things, but we shouldn't do that in, in total isolation. We should you know, let other groups know what we're doing and maybe we can work together and make, make it stronger, make it more interesting uh, so that it has a greater impact.